saving on the minimum wage. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's have a look at this article from Yahoo Finance you know, discussing how to save money when you're on the minimum wage. Now, I thought this would be a good article to read by Lucy because we've just looked at how long it takes to save for a house deposit. In Sydney, it was, what, 16.7 years. And that's saving 15% of your gross income. Uh, for a me- someone on a median income, it's impossible. It's, it's going to be a nightmare. You can't even... Servicing the mortgage will put you in stress, finan- housing stress. And this is the definition of it, guys. When a lower income house spends 30% of their income on housing costs, let alone also you know, even just saving for a deposit and paying for rent. Oh, rent too. That, that, that Most people on median income in Sydney would be paying 30% of their income on rent. So let, let's look at the advice here because... You, you can't count on the government. You can't count on anyone to take care of you. You've got to sort yourself out. One thing I would suggest is, well, you need to upskill. You need to have multiple income streams, ways to make money. You need to get above the median income. Okay, You need to do whatever you can to push yourself higher and higher in your earning potential, even if it's doing a couple of side gigs. Anyway, let's, let's have a look. $20 an hour, how to save when you're on the minimum wage. So Australia's national minimum wage is $20.33 an hour or $772 per week. It's not a massive amount, but it's still possible to save money while earning this income. Well, I think it's just managing your spending. I think that's... My prediction is that's going to be the big takeaway from this one, everyone. You know, let let me know. We're looking here. We're talking to Money Girl. So do you reckon there'll be any discussion about afterpay or am I being sexist here? Let me know in the comments. So... That's according to co-founder of financial literacy platform Money Girl, Miriam Mohammed, who fled an abusive relationship in Pakistan at the age of 19 before coming to Australia with just $300 to her name. She went on to study in Australia and complete a postgraduate degree. There was a moment after my postgraduate when I was about to take on full-time work for the first time in my life. And I literally sat down and did the math to figure out what it would take for me not to be in a poverty, she told Yahoo Finance. She realized that as a student on minimum wage, she was doing pretty well, all things considered. However, she also realized that if nothing changed about her financial situation, she would retire in poverty. Today, she works to help other women take on... Today, she works to help other women take on their finances and build financial security through Money Girl and a new partnership with the Warrior Women Foundation. Okay. The Warrior Women Foundation is a new Australian charity with the goal of helping vulnerable girls girls and women aged 15 to 25 develop the tools to become financially and socially independent. When it comes to saving... While on the minimum wage, Mohammed's message is clear. The most important thing is to start with whatever is available. So so you earn $20 an hour. Here's where to start. The first step is to get started. Understand how much is coming in. Okay, so you want to track every dollar. So this means looking at the number of hours worked and the rate of pay, which legally should be at least $20.33 an hour. Then work out how much money is being made on a fortnightly basis. The next thing to do is to understand how much is going out in your head. You already know how much you pay for rent and electricity. But I want you to actually sit down and look through the bank statements for the last month or two. Yeah, well, that's it. Often, you'll just be so busy, so full out, you won't have just the room, the time to spend to look at what's going on. Rachel's just started this new thing that she's getting all the family into, and it's bullet journaling. It's the whole idea of just a different method of managing your time and tasks that you have to do. And she's doing it properly. I'm not quite doing it as properly. But I mean, that, that's about getting off the screens, getting away, sitting down, taking time to think things through and to plan. Because, you know, it could be so easy just to set tasks here, put budgets here and you know, let it all slip through. For us, I found it was when, you know, I finally had a moment to sit down and realize what was going on with our finances where I could see where the stuff was just trickling out, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. You really need to get control of it. I'm hoping 
maybe naively, but I'm hoping we'll see this come out of the whole COVID lockdowns. It may be the first time people have actually managed to step back and to get it under control. Once savers have that, it's time to write down what all their expenses are and add them. If there are monthly or quarterly expenses, you'll need to divide them into four nightly quarters. That's the amount that's going out. Now you know how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. Now you've got an answer as to whether you're in the red or the green. Are you spending more than you earn? Or do you have a little bit left? For people who are spending more than they earn, Mohammed wants them to go back to the list of expenses and see what they can cut. The fat. Well, no, you want to keep the fat. The fat's the good part. You need to get out of it, get rid of this cut the fat. Uh, fat's what you want to eat, guys, okay? Don't fall for all the marketing. It's all bullshit. Look at ancient history, okay? At this stage, the goal isn't to have unspent money or just to break even. There might, uh, there might not be things you can eliminate, but there are possibly some things you should consider reducing. Things like shopping, wholesale instead of at retail, or making meal plans and getting groceries weekly instead of every day, and never going grocery shopping hungry. I mean, you can tell that's a young person's approach to it. We go shopping monthly. Monthly, everyone. That's when we were doing a real tough, really tough. Rachel got our food bill down so low, and she did a one-month shop. She'd go to Aldi with an Excel and compare stuff. We've kind of abandoned that because we've now prioritized our quality of our food, so we'll spend extra on meat. But even then, you know, when we were in this house and had the big freezer, we'd buy it all in bulk. We'd buy a whole beast at a time. Now we're only buying like a quarter or just you know, huge amounts of it as we can. But it's still tiny compared to buying in, in bulk. Breaking even is the first step to saving on minimum wage. Once savers have crossed that threshold, Mohammed suggests saving what is, whatever is left over in a separate savings account. Even if it's just $2, Mohammed said savers need to hunt down a fee-free savings account with as high interest rate as possible. See... What she's missing here is people are going to be in debt. The majority of people who are on minimum wage, I guarantee you they've racked up some credit card debt or some afterpay debt. Okay? So she, she's probably, I imagine, on... Well, can the, is, uh, Muslims aren't really meant to be borrowing money. My understanding is very sensible. A lot of Christians aren't meant to either. <laughs> it probably goes out the window, honestly. So I bet you, I bet you she's probably just really smart with her money and hasn't racked it up. But there's the thing. You need to look at the debt snowball technique if that's what's happening, guys. Westpac currently offers Australians aged 18 to 29 a 2.5% savings rate for values of up to 30 grand. 2.5%. Remember when that was high? Well, that, I mean, that sounds pretty good. Provided they make at least five transactions with a linked debt card a month. So you've got to jump through all these stupid bloody hoops. And this should be discrimination anyway. Just do it. The most important thing at this point is to, for you to start savings because there's no good minimum amount to start with. In my case, it started with $5 per fortnight because when I was on minimum wage as a student, after all my expenses, $5 with what I had left. Seeing that build over time gives you the motivation to keep going. And then every now and then, when you come into a little bit of extra money like tax season, you put that in and it gives you a little boost of morale for your savings fund. Okay, I mean, some good advice here. Let's have a bit of a talk about this one. I mean, good advice. Getting a handle of your income and expenses, cutting your expenses, and then saving the difference. She's missing the point that people are going to have debt. People in this situation, guaranteed majority of them, will have debt. What you need to do is you need to look at the uh, method of attacking your debt. First step, and this is from Ramsey, is to build up an emergency fund of a thousand bucks. Okay, that's just the quick first emergency fund that you build up. Then you start attacking your debts. You attack with the snowball technique, you attack the smallest dollar figure first because you want to get the psychological benefit of paying that debt off. So if you've got a credit card of, you know, 500 bucks at 20%, but then you've got another credit card at, you know, $8,000 at 21%, uh, mathematically, it's better to attack the eight thousand dollar one because you you know that interest will cost you more. But psychologically, it's better to tackle the five hundred buck debt first because you'll get that victory, and it's the victories that help you win the journey against debt. That's what.
what you need to do. And you need the thousand bucks just in case anything comes up. But honestly, also, you need to cut your expenses to the bloody bone. So some good advice there, everyone. Now, check out this video I did a few years ago. Five ways to prepare for Australia's recession, everyone. Check that video out. Five suggestions. Still some good advice in it. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.